So with the clay court season well underway and the ATP finally getting a big trophy to play for on the clay courts in Europe, Monte Carlo Masters, the only tournament actually on this week, and we had some big changes to the men's ranking. No changes to the women's because they actually didn't play only Billie Jean King Cup, and of course that's not worth any points. But let's go have a look at who won the Monte Carlo Masters this year. So only the one tournament this week, and it was the Monte Carlo Masters, and Rublev finally winning his first Masters 1000 title, beating Holger Rune in a three-setter, 5-7-6-2-7-5, to lift the biggest trophy of his career, and really put himself in the group of Masters 1000 champions, and maybe potentially slam champions. People are going to take him a lot more seriously serious now actually came back from 4-1 down in that final set so great for Rublev getting the biggest trophy of his career let's start off with the players that outside the top 10 have done well this week and gone up in the rankings starting with Lehechka he's gone up six spots to number 36 in the world that's a career high for him after having another solid week this week making the third round of Monte Carlo Jerry he's also gone up the rankings seven spots into number 51 in the world after another solid week on the clay and Struff he's gone up 36 spots to number 64 in the world after making the quarterfinals of Monte Carlo. So the players there having a good week on the clay, getting a boost in the ranks. Players that have gone down in the rankings this week, Grigor Dimitrov. He's gone down six spots, number 31 in the world, after failing to defend the semi-final points he made at Monte Carlo last year. Davidovich Fakina also dropping down 14 spots, number 38 in the world, after losing in the first round, losing all the points from last year's finals appearance in Monte Carlo. And Diego Schwartzman, he's gone down 11 spots, to number 48 in the world, also losing points from Monte Carlo last year. So a couple of guys there losing really early in Monte Carlo, not even getting a chance to prevent any of their points. Okay, let's start with the WTA rankings now, and there is no change with the ladies playing the Billie Jean King Cup, which is worth no points. So going into Stuttgart this week, this is what the rankings look like. Triontek stays at number one, with Sabalenka going in two, Bagula at three, Jabur at four, Garcia at number five, Coco Goff is six, Rubakina at seven, Kazakina at eight, Zachary at nine, and Kvitova rounds out the top 10 for this week. And the only player that is not playing in Stuttgart this week from the top 10 is Pagula. So nine of those players will be competing next week. We expect some changes. Also, Sviontek and Sabalenka are the defending finalists from Stuttgart. So potentially there could be some movement at the top in terms of ranking points next week. The race of the finals, also no movement this week after the players basically had a week off with the Billie Jean King Cup happening. Sabalenka still at number one with Rabakina at number two. Pagula at three, with Sviontek at four. Benchage at five. Kvitova at six. Krajikova at number seven. Goff at number eight. Eight, Azarenka at 9, and Lynette rounds out the top 10 for this week. But like I said, with Stuttgart next week, worth a lot of points on the WTA, we could see some real movement in the race of the finals as well. Jumping over to the ATP rankings now, and of course, with Monte Carlo ending, there are a few changes to the rankings. Djokovic, though, stays at number 1, despite not playing great in Monte Carlo, with Alcaraz staying at number 2. But Stefanos Sidipas, he's dropped down two spots after losing in the quarterfinals of Monte Carlo, losing a lot of points after winning the title last year, allowing Rude and Medvedev to go up to number three and four spots. So Steph really struggling the last couple of months to get points and keep his ranking in that top three. Rublev, after winning his first Master 1000, doesn't actually move up the rankings, just adds a lot of points to his ranking, closing the gap between him and Tsitsipas at number six. And we've got a change in the bottom, with Felix Ogeliasim going down two spots after missing Monte Carlo, allowing Holger Rune to go up two spots, making the final Monte Carlo, getting to a career high number seven in the world. And Yannick Sinner is in the middle there at number eight, so Rune at seven, Sinner at eight, Felix at nine, and Taylor Fritz. He rounds out the top 10 for this week, also making the semi-finals of Monte Carlo, but doesn't change in the rankings. Going over to the race of the finals now, and we've got some serious movements here. Daniel Medvedev, he stays at number one with Novak Djokovic at number two. Yannick Sinner, he goes up to number three with Carlos Alcaraz down to number four after Alcaraz didn't play Monte Carlo and Sinner made it to the semi-finals. And another change into the middle as well with Rublev going up seven spots to number five in the race of the finals after winning Monte Carlo, pushing Sidney Pass down to number six, Fritz down to number seven. Ashinov goes up one spot in that mix as well to number eight, pushing Paul down to number nine. Nori goes down two spots to number 10, and Tiafo drops out of the top 10 completely after missing this week in Monte Carlo. So it just shows when there's a big tournament on, worth a lot of points and you don't play, you're a chance of dropping down the rankings if the guys around you do well. So a big change in the rankings there, especially with Rublev getting that win. So there you have it. They are the rankings after Monte Carlo. And like I said, we don't have the WTA this week, so no changes there. But Stuttgart is huge. And of course, Madrid and Rome, both for the ATP and the WTA, are massive coming up in the next couple of weeks. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the biggest surprise for you this week? Is it the fact that Rublev finally won a big trophy? Remember, there were some big names playing in Monte Carlo as well. It wasn't like we didn't have everyone playing. 
you know, we did have Djokovic there. We had City pass the two-time champion. Medvedev was there. Zverev was there. Runa, of course, Sinner as well. And at the end, it was Rublev who was the one who held the trophy. I don't think it was expected. So great to see that. And he's got a massive boost in the ranks there. Especially the race of the final. He's been an ATB finalist the last few years. But let me know down in the comments below. What are you most excited to see maybe in the next couple of weeks? And what's been the biggest surprise for you this week?